So, hey, today on the bench, we have this Time Law 7 inch digital LCD microscope. This is the model DM201. We have multiple output modes, 7 inch HD. We have the 1200X mag. We can definitely store our photos and videos. Let's take a look at our specs here. So, it actually has a, a battery inside. It's going to be a 2 amp hour, 4 megapixel sensor. So Tom Law actually got up with me and asked if I would do a review on this, and I told him I'd be glad to look at it. I was very interested in it. At the time of this video, I'm mid-40s, so not only are smaller SMD electronics getting harder to do anyway, at my age, I'm getting why I really, really like these little small microscopes. They're just so, so handy. Just gonna look through this really quick here. If you uh, see anything that interests you, you can just pause the video there. First thoughts on the manual is, um, seems to be very nice and clear. There's a little bit more information on the specs there. So let's get into this thing. Well, there's the heart of it, the DM201 microscope. Nice. Very nice. A little remote. USB-C, USB-C. I stand extension tube. And it does come with HDMI to HDMI mini mini HDMI cable, that is awesome. One amp, a five volt adapter, a little small light barrier. So this is our bracket. And there is our base. So if you did want to add this extension, Do it like so or go without it right and it does come with a 32 gig micro SD card awesome so besides the micro SD card it also comes with 18650 cell. That's pretty awesome. So back now, let's let's hook the microscope up. We can either use the AC adapter that comes with it for five volts, or we can just plug our USB into another 5 volt supply. This battery is charging. We're going to have it plugged up for now just to show it uh, plugged in and powering up. Set this adapter that comes with it for convenience aside for now. And it does show our battery charging, so that's neat. Um, bring this blue lighter background over and we can see this adjusted pretty good there but this is going to be a little bit different level let's look at this this is a board on a cordless drill battery and if we want to get a better field of view and more room to work maybe with a soldering iron you can just raise this up to 
to up to that level if we want. So I really like that a lot. And by the way, I went ahead and put the cup on here for shadow reduction. It's actually called a light barrier. If you get up really, really close, that'll help keep the, the LED light ring on the bottom from having that glaring reflection on it. But really doesn't help here so much, but it does up close. And by the way, the intensity of our lights change here on a slide bar. Just our lights, how we how we need them, and and there we go. I I do a lot of circuit board repair on on my channel, so um, sometimes I'll put it up on the big display. So let me hook this up to my splitter here to input three, and this will be a good test. I may have to power it on. To, um, to pick up that input and it may just be that going through a splitter don't pick it up automatically but we'll see and there we go move this over just a little a little bit more you see so now I'm sure some questions have come in about delay time so here we go. Um, you'll be able to see it here as well as up here at the same time for yourself. So, I don't notice any delay. I watch me probing around here. No, no delay back and forth. Uh, pretty impressive, really. I had that light in the view there. And that's, if we were to dim it all the way down or off and all the way up. So you get to see the difference there in the contrast and how well the camera picks that up. And also, to be fair, I do have my workbench lights on wide open as usual when I'm doing work. So you do get to see how the screen looks compared to the brightness of the light. Um, of course, we could dim that and it will be even better. But I choose to leave it on because that's the way I'm going to be working most of the time. And it, and it does a, a fantastic job of, of being bright enough to see very well. So I'm okay with using a monitor. And for this one, I'm actually going to be okay just using this 7 inch display because it's, it is big enough. I'm going to unhook the HDMI now and see if it just go back on its own. And it does. So I'm going to want to bring this back down now to get a little bit better magnification on the board. We can do that as well. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to bring up a USB cable for my computer. And I'm actually going to hook up my camera to the computer. I'm going to go ahead and pull out a little protector from the remote and it looks like we can use this for OK and our up and down, our directional buttons here. So. USB MSDC, so this is going to be, it stands for a micro SD card, so we can use it in storage mode. We can just grab our JPEG or videos from it, or we can hit OK and go to UVC mode, which actually puts it out to the computer. And if we do that, here we go, camera app. And there we go. So now if we use the computer, we can actually record from the computer, but we have a 32 gig card as well, so we could do either way. And of course, you can either do um, OBS or um, any other kind of screen capture device you like as well. So I really like the ability to do either way here. So I really like that flexibility on the microscope. I don't really notice any delay here. Um, I'm moving this back and forth way faster than you would testing anything, of course, or soldering, but. Hopefully you can see both on, on screen, me moving it and how it shows up. So, very, very handy there. Of course, you're going to see a lot of electronics under this microscope over time. I'll just show an O-ring here, something that may be a little outside the norm for my channel, but I do work on pretty much everything, not just electronics, and sometimes even more mechanical things can benefit from something like a microscope, especially with some eyes getting a little bit older maybe 
so we can record here and um, I could put this up on the screen for you or you can just see it here as I'm seeing it. So I'll just record here so we can see some of this up on the screen as well. But we see here we have two O-rings. Uh, one was a failed O-ring and one's basically brand new. And even with the microscope pretty much focused right in on it, I've almost forgotten myself which one's new and which one's old. So let's take a little bit closer look and see if, uh, if the microscope can help us out at all here. I'm actually going to come on down just a little bit more. Don't really notice anything obvious with this one. Yeah, this one looks in very good condition and uh, brand new to me. Looks better than my, my cracked up fingers anyway. Let's take a closer look at this O-ring. And oh yeah, look at that. I'll even hold it up. We can definitely tell that this O-ring is dry rotten and it's definitely had better days. So just a small example here of a image on the microscope. I'll probably put the board uh, back up here briefly. Since I actually didn't get into recording of it, I don't believe. The top of the chip focus there and then the solder mask and solder pads and vias there are a little bit better focused on. We see here our data pins for the microcontroller. Let me go up just a little. We see these data pins for our microcontroller right here. And we can't see them extremely, we can't see the reset here extremely well, but that right there is actually the reset pin. So there's our reset. So sometimes with uh, these batteries, especially after replacing them with something, I do have to do a reset. And sometimes, small percentage of the time, you'll, you'll get lucky by going reset to your ground, resetting the microcontroller since it's always powered on and sometimes just needs a recycle. You'll see that in some of the comments on some of my repair videos. That I typically say five to maybe 8% of the time that might get you out of a bind with one acting up. Maybe 10% of the time cleaning the board, corrosion, and probably the other nearly 80% of the time is going to be, you know, bad sales. Sometimes you might need a haul three. But yeah, I mean, our, our LED lights are easy to move. Our base is really nice. I really like the extension on the tube here. They're calling it the stand extension tube. I really like that because that gives you exactly four inches or about 100 millimeters of, of extra distance there. And I have these lights off now and I'm just using this ring light so you can see just for instance here if we go a little bit closer yeah so that ring can be very very helpful when you when you are really really up close to something even though probably 95% of the time I'm going to be at least four to five inches away so I can either test or solder you know get some tweezers in here and things of that nature so it's either going to be test leads or, or tweezers and a soldering iron usually. So this is going to be typically my um, average work height probably. So we can go as high as a little over eight and a eighth. I mean, you could even remove that if you wanted to, right? You could even go a little bit higher. That'll get you to almost nine inches. So at this point, I'm actually going to just unplug from the computer and we will actually run off a of battery. So the 18650 is showing charged here. So there's our charge indicator. And I believe anytime we touch the power button, it'll show back up. So that's neat. 
So our lights and everything, if you can see that, we're just all running off the 18650 rechargeable battery. So let's look at the menu on this. We can um, go through it as well with the little remote here after we get into it. But um, we can go over to playback and go OK. And this will be reading off by SD card if you wanted to play this. Go to the next one. Hit menu, we can go over to back to the microscope and go okay. We'll just go back to the microscope view and um, so that's playback. We can also, we can do this either way. We could do the arrows here or we can do it on the remote. So here we see on the menu, we have our auto exposure, auto or lock, our image brightness. So we can change any of these. We can do it with the remote again, or instead of putting the remote in your weight here, I'll, I'll do it right here on the screen. But our image brightness, we could adjust that if we would like here. I like to keep it around 70%. Our white balance, you can even cal your white balance with a gray card under here. As, as it shows in the in the manual here um, we can do our different effects as far as black and white we also have wdr which is our wide dynamic range contrast saturation sharpness we can mirror horizontal or vertical the frequency which here in north america would be 60 hertz return so here we see some of our settings in it's two different pages here, but the first one is our shortcut. If we want the shortcut button for OK to be our photo, video, or freeze, and I have it set for video. So even if you hit OK or hit it here while in microscope mode to record video, our resolution on photo and video, LCD brightness. If you want to auto off, especially if you're on battery power, maybe you can make it automatically turn off language, which is as many languages to choose from our date and time. Go back to the factory defaults, format our card, and of course our version we're running here. Return and we'll go, this is our marking. We can do crosshair. We can have our horizontal and vertical lines on and off, including ruler center. So when you cross cursor, you I have it off, but you could have a ruler or a center marking line index. You can actually have multiple lines, have them show on and off in the line type, etc. And that's basically it. And that pretty much completes it for the menu. Um, one thing I don't know if I mentioned or not, when you're in microscope mode, you can use your arrows to actually um, you do your digital zoom in. For example, with this button cell battery up here, we can go all the way to 16x on the digital zoom if you're interested in that. So that might be handy for you. Do it either way, but the remote's pretty neat. Well, I think that's long enough on this video, but this is going to be extremely a handy tool to have on the bench. Very impressed with all the things it comes with from the stand extension tube. The user manual is actually very well done. The little light barrier, the HDMI cable, two USB-C cables. So it comes with pretty much everything you need. Uh, clear instructions. Have nothing negative to say about it. Um, of course, we're going to see, you're going to be able to see this get used more and more on my workbench, of course, as I as I do repair different things. So, so if you like this digital LCD microscope, I will have a link in the description. And clicking on that link will help support the channel and it is greatly appreciated. I want to thank Tom Law for sending this microscope out to us. Just trusting us to, to actually look at it fairly and give us a chance and just see how well it works and see all the options and see it work with a rechargeable battery. Still showing fully charged at this point. So yeah, if you have any other questions about this microscope, I'm sure the more I use it, the more I'll be able to answer those. So, so feel free to ask in the comments below. So if you liked the video today, please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching and God bless.